Hey, dear, can you hear me? No, I see you. Yeah, but can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I hear you. Good night, teacher. Good night. Yeah, I'm going to turn on my camera in a couple of seconds. Um, I see that uh, some of you are here and some others are still uh, coming in. So we are going to wait exactly at 8 p.m., right, to get us started. So let's see. Let's wait for the ones that uh, hasn't come in yet. Um, ah, alguien está el incorrecto, dice. Y es un big shame que de aquí no se pueda copiar. Quizás cuando ingresó los datos para ingresar, teacher. Sí, es posible que hayan tenido ese inconveniente y es que la verdad que el link que le ponen a uno en el grupo de WhatsApp, como yo no soy administrador, no puedo ni copiar ni pegar, entonces es bastante complicado para hacerlo. Okay. Así que um, voy a intentar mandarle lo que yo tengo, que sí es lo que puede copiar y pegar porque... There we go. Y no, no, le, sé, no le sale algún mensaje de la cámara. Eh, en el caso de, de mi cámara, yo la tengo apagada ahorita. Entré con la cámara. Ah, ok. Sí, ya voy a encenderla en okay. un par de minutos. Sí. Bueno, en un minuto. Ok. <laughs> sí. Ok. There you go. Hola. <laughs> ok, hi. hi. I was already a warrior. So I said, hello. I am no, I am to be. Um, no, you know, here. Oh, there was no one. Yeah, maybe at the very beginning of the class, there was no one. I tried to get in. I know the people that no speak. I know, no, I have hello. No, <laughs> no, I like <laughs> None of your classmates say hello to you. Okay. Yes. All right, then. I'm sorry yeah. for me. I know important. Uh, okay. No, that's fine, right? So if you have the ability to say hello to your partners, right? That's totally fine at the moment that no one has coming in. So let's see, I'm going to leave my cell phone aside. So if you hear someone claiming for help, let me know because during the class, I cannot be just paying attention to the cell phone, to the WhatsApp group and being paying attention to you. So it's either or, right? So if you see someone, right? Or if someone is trying to getting help on the WhatsApp group and I'm not aware of it, just call my attention, let me know. Hey teacher, someone is, um, trying to get some help on the WhatsApp group so I can go ahead and go back to it, right? So <clears throat> let's see, um, good night, right? Everyone, welcome to this uh, new module. As I was aware of, it is uh, pre-advanced two. So we are going to go into certain topics and by the very beginning, right? Let me introduce myself, um, Marta Campos, right? So I'm gonna be your facilitator during this module. We are gonna be together from today up to July the 13th. So that will be the time that our module will end up. So <clears throat> let me just go ahead and share my screen. I have prepared a presentation for you. Uh, this presentation it is a, basically just a welcome presentation and part of our class presentation. Hello, well, good evening. Hey, good evening. Welcome. Thanks. Welcome. <clears throat> ah, this reminder here is kind of problematic. Uh, let me know if you're able to see the screen. Can you see it? No? It's loading. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have got the flu. Can you see the screen, my friends? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, I see. Okay, perfect. 
Thank you. So if you hear me kind of bad, um, I got the flu. I got some allergies, right? So uh, whether the, whenever the weather is like this, um, I suffer, right, from my throat. So if you hear me like a kind of a sneezing, coughing, I do apologize in advance. So it's something that I will try to avoid, right? If I feel the necessity, I'm gonna turn off my audio and the camera just to not do it in front of you. But um, in case, right, that an accident happened, just to let you know, I'm not so well. So um, that will be basically, right? So as I said, right, uh, my name is uh, Marta Campos. So we are in pre-advanced module two. And as I said, welcome to everyone, right? So let's see what we have from the very beginning. Our scheduling, right? So we know that our module is four weeks. So we started today, Monday, June the 19th, right? So to Thursday the 13th, right, 2023. Our first evaluation is uh, June the 29th, right, the next coming week. And the final evaluation is going to be on July the 13th, the last day of the module. We are going to study five UNX, right? This is the name of the UNX. Uh, we are going to start today with this, right? That is uh, what's wrong with it. So that's the first name of the unit. Uh, unit number two is the work we lived in. Uh, unit number three, lifelong learning. Uh, far, fourth, at your service. And uh, number five, the past and the future. So this is basically what we are going to be in a study. In all of the units, as you might know, we are going to have some grammar topics and some others. Um, there are going to be vocabulary, different things, right? Um, what else? So here, do you have any questions so far? Questions? No question, teacher. No questions. No. Awesome then. Okay, let's continue. The attendance, as you might know, the attendance is the 80%, right? So you need to have the 80% of your attendance to these classes, right? Uh, the virtual uh, conference. What about the absenteeism? Absenteeism, right? In this case, the absenteeism, I'm not capable or I'm not allowed to give you any type of permission, right? So you can miss the class, right? So if you have like an emergency, if you have something that happened, please evaluate. If you really need to get absent from the conference, or even if you can come in, even though you don't talk, right? So be careful with absenteeism because with absenteeism, I'm not able to do anything, right? So I'm not able to help you in any type of means by this, right? So let's see, uh, the schedules, right? We know that we have a schedule, which is from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., which is means 60 minutes. And that's what uh, they will be looking for, right? So 60 minutes exactly that you are here. I know that you are coming from work, that probably you are working in office, that now uh, you are not doing home office and you need to move right from one place to your house. So if by any change uh, you are on the bus and the class already start, try that to log in, right? So try that to log in into the conference. Just let me know, internet parable message, teacher, I cannot be participating. Or if I, even if I try to call you, I won't be able to just answer right away because I'm on the bus. So I don't want to miss the 60 minutes. So everything has a possibility, right? So don't be worried. Uh, I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to be making a, a shame of you if you have something that happens, right? But if you are able to come in, try to come in exactly at 8 p.m. I'm going to be here every time, like uh, five minutes, four minutes prior the class start, right? So just to give some time to do the recording and we can get uh, that 60 minutes accomplished. What about the attendance list? Uh, the attendance list, I'll try to take it every day at 8.15, trying to make some time available for everyone to come in into the conference, right? So if someone's came in late, then 8.15, Please let me know through a message here or just raise your hand and tell me, teacher, I'm here. I just coming in so I can take your attendance, right? So in the minutes, I won't be able to make up the minutes that you miss, but at least you are not going to have the complete absenteeism, right? 
So what about the plans for completion? The plan for completion, same, right, the 80%. This is something that we can pretty control. It's about you. If you need some help, just let me know and I can help you with the homeworks or in this case, the exercise that you have there. So questions that you might have here so far. No question, teacher. No questions, you sure? Okay. So let's see. Um, oh my God, there's someone that cannot come in. Well, um, in regards to some terms that to come in and log in, I'm not able to do too much because I don't know exactly how much this has changed, right? So um, let's wait for some help there. And uh, we are gonna go to this part. Homeworks and evaluations, right? Homeworks and evaluations, as you already know, uh, we don't have like an evaluation, extra evaluation, more than the ones that you have in the platform. So in the week number one, we are going to study, in this case, uh, section one and section two, which is unit one and unit two. Um, week number two, section three and the midterm, right? Uh, week three, the section four, and the final week, which is the number uh, four, section number five, or unit five, and the final exam, right? So the final exam, the, all of the tests, homeworks, are the ones that you have in your virtual platform, right? So I don't assign extra homework to you. If you want to do some practice and you want me to just check it on it, definitely I can go ahead and do it. But extra homework, there is no any extra homework on here. So questions that you might have, questions so far? Got questions? No, no, no questions. questions. You sure? Okay. Sorry. So you sure no questions, everything is fine? Okay. So questions that you might have for me prior that we can start the, the class. Any comment that you might have or something that you would like to do? I'm willing to hear you. My dear friends. Excuse me, teacher, you are going to upload uh, the videos? Oh, yes. The last uh, the class? Yep. Every day. Yes, they are going to be every okay. day. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question that you might have? No questions, no more questions, you're fine? No question, teacher. No more no questions. questions. No okay. more. No. All right. So I know that I'm a speed up person, right? So I tend to talk really fast to speak kind of fast. So if you are feeling that I'm going too fast, just let me know, right? So the main aim is that you can understand what exactly uh, we want to learn during this module. So if you feel that I'm going too fast or something happened, just let me know. So let's see then, uh, let's get it started. I hope that you had some time available to scan the virtual platform for this new module. So we are going to start with the unit number one, which is what's wrong with it, right? So that's the name of our unit for sure. Here we are going to talk about issues or inconveniences or problems, right? So let's see, what do we have? Some common complaints, right? So in this unit, we are going to be talking about complaints. Complaints can be talked about issues, problems that you had with something with someone, right? that happens. For example, there is one complaint, wireless services, right? The wireless service is basically the cell phone service that you have. So some of the most common complaints is there is no signal so you can get online. What about hotels, right? If you get into a hotel and the bathroom sink is leaking, right? So that's a real big problem, right? Cleaners, right? Dry cleaners, sinkers, your favorite sweater, right? So you might said here, taxis, right? The taxi driver to church you too much, right? Tries to church you too much. The doctors, you have to wait a long time for an appointment, right? 
How do you think about this? Restaurants, your food is under cooked, right? So some common complaints that people have regarding to a service, right? Or something that might ha happen or with someone. Basically here is with services, right? Have you ever been on these type of issues once in your life? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had any complaint or any of these places or with the services? Uh, the taxes, the driving in areas that change too much. That's true, right? Regular taxes, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what about you have now some different uh, applications that you can use to get a taxi? Do you think that they charge too much or they are fair in the price? Are they fair when they are trying to church you? Or is as well the same, like a regular taxi service? Oh, um, doctor, um, too. Um, yes, it's um, okay. the, um, the long time is there for the visit doctors. Oh, yes, right, for the appointment to the doctor. Let's be careful with the with the verbs, right? So visit is one thing. When you go in to see someone, right, how is this person doing? And the appointment is literally that you have something. Basically, the appointments are, in this case, uh, with doctors or with any type of office, like a lawyers or something else. So if you go in and visit someone, it's like if you come into my house, so you are visiting me. But if you are going to have, for example, an extra class with me, we have an appointment for an extra class. So that is something different. So when it is something professional, in this case, let's say it, or let's call it like that, when it is something professional or you need some type of assistance in professional terms, it's gonna be an appointment. And if you are going to just go in like social thing, you are going to visit someone. That's right. We get it? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you a quick, a quick question. How used to are you to only English classes? ¿Qué también vamos ahorita con solamente inglés? You feel it too hard? Um, teacher. Diga. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Carlos. Pleasure to meet you, Carlos. Um, okay, well, um, um, <clears throat> for me, um, no much, no much, a little English. Oh, no. I got a little English. Okay. Yes. No much. Uh, is my first experience um, in class online in English corporativo. Okay. Online classes. Have you been in other classes? Estado en otras no. clases? No. Um, okay. Um, yes. But, uh, um, how do you say? Uh, hace como un año que me, que, o sea, uh, me retiré porque ya no sigue, ya no habían como pecas, entonces hasta ahora. Oh, so you just stop it for a year and now that you are continuing. But un año y yes. ya lo está continuando. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay. No, uh -huh. no. Um, 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 how do you say? Uh, no, no practice, practice, no practice, nothing. Okay, you have lost the practice. Ha perdido la práctica ahorita. Yes, yes, teacher. Okay, all right then. The rest Thank of the you. class, you're welcome. Gracias. El resto de la clase. Uh huh. I understand. Um, Eight percent. Okay. Perfect. That's fine, right? That's really fine and fair. Um, the rest of the class, los demás. Eh, no tenga miedo Good de night, decirme, teacher. Buenas uh -huh. noches. Uh, my name is Wendy, and nice to meet you. Uh, with the English, I'm pretty good. I understand all what you said. You are fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. 
Oh, yeah. All right. So the rest of the good class. Good evening, good. teacher. Good evening, Byron. Yeah, but no mistake, Byron, am, right? Yes. I am learning a new word. Okay. And I am understand the words I'm not understand. Okay. What is the word that you don't understand? Hello? What is the word that you don't understand? Mm, I don't remember. You don't remember, <laughs> right? <laughs> Scan the picture and let me know then. Hi, Carlos, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, teacher. Um, Good evening. I have a similar problem why Carlos. Uh, I haven't practiced my vocabulary. You haven't practiced your vocabulary. Okay. Good. Uh, Madeleine, tell me. Madeleine, you have your microphone off. Tiene el micrófono apagado, Madeleine. Ahí I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Hi, okay. good evening. Hey, good evening. So, I understand all that you uh, explain us, but so you you speak so faster, <laughs> and oh, yeah, sometimes <laughs> and sometimes it's so difficult to understand that. But when you speak, um, how do you say normal? I guess slow. And a slow. little. Yes, a uh -huh. little slow is um, I can understand a lot. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So that's good, right? So that's what I said. I tend to speak really fast, right? So I go like in a rush. So don't worry. Um, look, I haven't heard everyone, right? And I know that we are 23 here. We should be 23. And I don't know how the rest is doing, right? So um, the main aim on this module is that you can have exactly an English class, English, right? I'll try to combine English and Spanish uh, just to do or give the opportunity to the rest of the class, right? Also the ones that are not having practice in a couple of days, right? So. Let's try to see and how I can accommodate because um, I know that for the ones that already are used to, it's going to be hard. And for the ones that are not used to, it's going to be beneficial. So we need to have a win to win here. Right? So let's see. Uh, some common complaints, right? Eh, los complaints son en este caso quejas, right? Uh, when you got a complaint, is because you are not happy. Right. And that's why we have the picture at the very beginning, right? The person just with an angry face that is not happy, or the angry and red face, right? So the complaints are either problems or issues, right? With someone or with something. Entonces, los complaints son quejas, ¿verdad? Son inconvenientes, problemas, ya sea con algo o con alguien, ¿verdad? En este caso, Servicios, más que todo. So we got wireless service, right? El wireless service, básicamente, eh, para que empezáramos a hablar un poco, es el servicio de celular, right? Have you ever had any problem with your wireless service? ¿Han tenido algún problema con su servicio de celular? Any issue? Uh -huh. Yes, internet, no, no, no. Um, internet, no. Working. No working. working. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, right. Tends to happen. Tends to happen. Someone else? Any problem with your wireless service? No I have signals. No I have signal, right? That's the worst thing that can happen to you. No having signal. You cannot call, you cannot message. Eso es lo peor quizás que puede pasar, no tener señal, no puede llamar, no puede mandar mensajes. No que empieza right? a lloviznar y se va la señal. Exactly, right. 
So we don't want to mention names, right? <laughs> Company names. It's very rainy and it goes on. Please, please, please. Please, please. please. Stay <laughs> up. Yes, I know. I know how you feel with your mother. Yeah, tell me, Saul. Yeah, I think that we all the time had problems with the internet. Well, I live in, in Chalatenango. All the time it's raining. All the time it's raining, the internet is very bad. It's very bad. I see. Yeah, I know. Last vacation, we went to, what is the name of this place? I cannot remember. The thing is that it was there in Chalatenango too. And yeah, was really difficult. It was raining, it was cold. Uh, especially for us, right? That we are not used to. It was cold, was freezing, and the signal was was kind of so so, but it was not good. So yeah, I know. What about you, Reina? Tell me. Good evening, teacher. In my good case, <laughs> in my case, uh, it was for um, bad luck because my new phone. Mm -hmm. It was for my new phone. Okay. I had wireless. Yeah, wireless uh, service. Okay. Wireless, sorry. Mm -hmm. Wireless service, but just for, I don't know, something was wrong with that phone oh. because uh, it's it's new. Oh. And it so, just go down. Look. Sorry? It's just go down. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's something <laughs> from brand. manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, but <brand>. yes, manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, manufacturer issue, right? The yes. manufacturer issue is uh, like by Reina is describing you buy a new brand new phone and the phone is not working fine. So it's a manufacturer exactly. issue, right? <laughs> it's an error de manufactura, right? So yeah. Yes. New vocabulary. Thanks. Yeah, new vocabulary. You're welcome. It's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice teacher. What? It's, it's a nice teacher. <laughs> I was able to... Oh yeah, it's damaged, right? Defective, defective yes. or damaged, right? Yes, it's defected. So manufacturer defecting. You can replace, right? You can uh, submit a, a claim to replace, right? Um, let's see if I have any extra notepad here. <clears throat> let's see. And let me see if you're able to see my notepad. I tend to use notepad, so it's easier for me because I don't have to be moving around. So can you see the notepad or not? Pueden ver el notepad o no lo pueden ver? No, verdad? No. No, okay. And now? Y ahora? Yes. 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 Okay, so... <clears throat> so in this case, right, uh, you can submit a claim, right? Submit a claim. ¿Qué es esto? Esto es poner un reclamo, ¿verdad? Poner un reclamo. Or in this case, to get a replacement, right? A replacement. ¿Y qué es esto? Un reemplazo. Me disculpan si hay algunas palabras que en español, ¿verdad? Y si tengo algún maestro de aquí de... De, de lenguaje y literatura y me va a disculpar a veces um, my Spanish grammar is not good. I'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> yes. it's okay yeah so uh, you can submit a claim for a replacement right or for a change right un cambio right cambio this one it can be either a verb or a noun right so depending on how you are going to use it, it can be a verb and a noun. So el cambio puede ser un cambio de verb, que usted va a cambiar algo, o en este caso, change something, right? Que va a ser un cambio de algo o de un noun, ¿verdad? So um, you can use this one, right? Submit a claim. You can submit a claim. You can, it's a replacement or an, uh, a change, right? For a change of the equipment. So the complaints, right? So in this case, the complaints, as we were discussing, they are quejas. So whenever you have a complaint, also you can submit a complaint form, right? A complaint form. And how is that? A complaint form. 
Entonces, um, en este caso sería una hoja de quejas. Right? Um, how you will say it in Spanish? A complaint form. A form. Un formulario, ¿verdad? Formulario de quejas. Formulario de quejas. So you might find different um, different um, meanings on each of them. So it will depend on how you would like to use it, right? Va a poder encontrar diferentes significados y va a depender de usted cómo um, lo quiera decir ya el español, ¿verdad? Una hoja de quejas, un formulario de quejas, etc., etc. So those ones are the complaints, right? The complaints are quejas, right? So let's see. For example, uh, we have another one. Let's talk a little bit. Doctors, right? Do you have any complaint with doctors? Have you ever had any situation with a doctor? ¿Tiene usted alguna queja con los doctores? ¿Ha tenido alguna situación con los doctores? Mm -hmm. Yes. One. <laughs> <laughs> For that sound, it's like. <laughs> yeah, the worst of my life, maybe. Oh. Because it was about attention for me. Oh, it uh, happened. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly how to explain, but mm -hmm. it was, um, um, I don't know, uh, trouble with, um, tell me how to say, eh, problemas en las vías urinarias. Oh, you have problems uh, with your kidneys, but let me check exactly how to translate that. Give okay. me one second. Okay. So you went to the doctor then. In the meantime, I'm looking for it. Let us know. So you went to the doctor and what happened? And uh, the thing is, I was for, uh, I was there in the hospital, in mm -hmm. a public hospital. Okay. Um, uh, for that reason, but uh, I didn't know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. The thing is, um, they they were uh, shaking me um, for another, for another um, I don't know, sickness <laughs> for another oh, thing so about the diagnostic yes yes for another diagnostic mm -hmm. so i stayed there uh, maybe one uh, 24 hours a day a complete day but the attention was um the worst mm -hmm. the worst because remember that the doctor was um Maybe, I don't know how to say, burlarse, I don't know, of joking or... Joking, yeah, we will we'll say joking. Something like this. Yes. Something yes. like, you you were, you were um, um, I don't know, exagerando for yeah, my pain. that you're making up your pain. Exactly, for my pain, so mm -hmm. it was terrible, terrible. And I was so angry, angry that day. Okay. I'm not, I, I wasn't polite that day. I know, yes. <laughs> Angriness can let us to do things that we are not used to or that we are not really are, right? So whenever you are angry, you are not thinking in reality, right? Or whenever you are in pain, you are not thinking in reality. The only thing that you can think about it is your pain, right? Exactly. So, yeah. And the thing was that I was so um, impressed, impressed because a doctor with bad attention, mm -hmm. because I, I said, I said, I'm not, um, I don't know, uh, shopping something. I'm a yeah. patient. Yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> right. So it was the worst experience. But just one. Thanks yes, God, that just one. that day. <laughs> That day, oh, see, totally understand. Get me one second, Natalie, and I'm going to go with you. So, yes, uh, thank you so much for sharing that to us, Rina. So, this is your question, right? You need urinary tract problems, urinary tract problems, right? Thanks. Yeah, uh, making fun, you can say that in reality, right? Están burlando de ti, opting up. Es como que estás actuando tu situación o que realmente no pasa. And instead of saying impressed, you can say I was surprised, right? So it will sound more natural. 
I was ah, surprised. Okay. Yes, it will I sound see. natural. Va a sonar un poco más natural si lo dicen así. I was surprised, right? Um, the correct question in this think one. I it could be at the end. I was surprised. Mm, depends because um, if you are going to use it like that, surprise or surprised, uh, depende realmente lo que estaremos diciendo. Si realmente vamos al feeling en el pasado, sí, que es lo que vamos a ver dentro de un rato. Si realmente estamos hablando en este caso de un momento pues que está pasando, que pasó hace unos minutos atrás, puede ser así. Dependiendo de lo que usted me quiera decir. Sí, porque aquí ya estamos entrando en otra, en otra situación. Esto es, um, esto se utiliza en cómo nos hacen sentir a nosotros, cómo se siente una persona en algún momento en el pasado. Sí, uh, you are right, porque estás hablando de algo que pasó hace mucho. Si sí, es algo que ha pasado literalmente unas horas atrás, puedes ponerlo así. Depende. Ah, ok, ok. Thank uh -huh. you. You're welcome. I was acting up eh, esta. Uh, he was making fun of me. Eh, esta parte, ¿verdad? Y aquí están todas las oraciones. Eh, como sonarían un poco más eh, naturales. No quiero decir que estén mal dichas. No, al contrario, muy bien. Pero se pueden escuchar mucho mejor. Muy bien, gracias. Eh, Arely, me iba a decir, you tell me. Oh, oh, oh no, ya no. Oh. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant? <laughs> What do you want to say yes. to us? <laughs> no, um, I, um, I have a, a, que a veces tengo cita con el doctor y nos dejan esperando. Eso es lo que más no, me incomoda. Eso es. Y a veces ya tengo calculado el tiempo y yo digo, no voy a tardar tanto y tengo tanto para ir, trasladarme a otro lado y sacar con otras cosas. Y bueno, eso es lo que más me incomoda. En inglés está bien complicado decirlo. I love that one. That was sincere. Uh, I'm not making fun of you, right? No me estoy hablando de usted, pero sí fue, eso fue muy sincero. Eso fue muy sincero. Okay. Um, yeah, I know how you feel. Uh, what I basically do it is um, as permission in my job, right? I always ask permission whenever I have an appointment with a doctor. I have some heart problems. So every four months or depending on how the doctor decided, I need to go to the, you know, <laughs> the name of that institution, famous institution, and it's the two way long for me. Imagine that I, I request the appointment for 7 a.m. It was already 8.30 and they haven't prepared to us, right? And what I mean prepared to us is that they, uh, You know, they take your blood pressure, they see your temperature and all those stuff, right? That the nurse does. It was already 8.30 and they haven't. And my appointment was at 7.30. So then uh, it takes another two way long. So to make just this story from long to short, I get out at exactly 12 p.m., right? So 12 midday. So yeah, it takes two way long. And I know how you feel, and that's made me feel like a kind of uncomfortable because I asked for permission the whole day, right? So in my case, I lost the whole day of work because I won't be able to come back on time. So that's why, yeah, I know how you feel. Lo entiendo, verdad? Eh, lo mismo me pasa a mí, así que. Yeah, alguien más que quiera compartir? ¿Alguien más que gusta compartir o nadie? Dígame, Ana. Good evening, teacher. Nice to meet Good evening. you. Good evening. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, sometimes um, they don't um, uh, find the correct diagnostic in algunas oh, ocasiones. Yes. That's true. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. The diagnostic, right? Yeah. Good, difficult, salud. Yeah, in terms of health, right? Health. That it will be uh, health. Health. 
in terms of health, right, it's kind of difficult. You depend a lot of on the doctor uh, regarding how you feel, right? So they can let you know uh, where you are or what is happening. So yeah, it's difficult. Like happened to Reina, right? They wow. give a bad diagnostic and maybe she was not there because uh, a headache, it was something really deep, right? So yeah, they give bad diagnostics. I know. I know how yes. you feel as well, too. Yeah. It happens a lot to me. I fell down in the bathroom and they say that it was nothing. And I ended up with a big problem on my knee. So up to this moment, it's really hard for me to use uh, wear high heels or even to walk or even to run. I, so, yeah, I know how you feel. It was a bad diagnostic on me, too. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's true. So there we go. Then does someone else wants to add something prior we move? Alguien quiere agregar algo antes de que nos movamos? No. No. Por favor, no tenga miedo de decirme que se me ha olvidado la lista porque a veces a mí las cosas a veces se me olvidan, verdad? Lo lamento mucho. Eh, Ya voy a pasar lista, creo que ya todos estamos por acá. ¿Alguien más que desea agregar algo o estamos bien hasta acá? No more. We are good. No more. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let's see, let's go then into... So we already have a conversation, right? Ya tuvimos una pequeña conversación. So this is part of your grammar. This is part of your grammar, right? We are going to be describing problems, right? This is the part number one. So as you might see, we have complaints, right? As we said, those are problems too. That's another synonym for it. So we are going to use with past participle as an adjective. The same that happened, right? Uh, with uh, the, the phrase that Reina said. So, ¿qué tenemos acá? Vamos a describir problemas. Vamos a utilizar pasados participios como adjetivos, ¿verdad? En este caso. So, eh, como ustedes pueden ver, they are verbs, right? So, how are you doing with the past participle? ¿Cómo están con los pasados participios? The most sincere that you can be. Lo más sincero que ustedes puedan ser. Yo no me enojo, no me molesto, no voy a decir nada. Solamente es para estar en un punto de saber si tengo que reforzar algo. Yes, o, sure. o sea, I, I, no, I not remember the past part of the Ok, perfecto. Gracias. Muchas gracias por su sinceridad. El resto de la clase. In my case, teacher, uh, I need more practice the past participle. Ok, los pasados participios. So, Teacher, alguien más, diga. And the past participle is when you use the IED. Well, here you only have, uh, well, here the most ones are ED forms. Estos la mayoría son ED, pero también tenemos torn, que es tear, que es este. Entonces, eh, tiene otra forma al pasado participio. ¿Verdad? Ok. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Sí, así que, pues, um, vamos a yeah, ver. Teacher, as when we talk about the past, uh, we need to follow a structure. Uh, for, for example, I have word. Yes, uh, but that one, it would be past, past participle, right? Uh, that one, it would be past perfect. I have word. So, yo he trabajado. ¿verdad? Entonces es esa parte. En realidad los pasados pues eh, son los que utilizamos por lo general, ¿verdad? O bueno, los que se utilizan en, en, en general del pasado simple, ¿verdad? En el pasado simple ustedes van a tener eh, por lo menos eh, tres formas de un solo verbo. Van a tener uh, la base form, ¿verdad? Eh, no sé si esto se va a ver realmente. 
Déjenme verlo. Vamos a retroceder un poco y vamos a ver el uh, Simple Pass, ¿verdad? Vamos a retroceder un poquito y nos vamos a ir al Simple Pass porque es ahí donde se ubica esta parte, donde nos introducen pues, los verbos y también los pasados participios. Nos vamos a ir al Simple Pass para luego movernos un poquito al Present Perfect. So, here uh, vamos a tener... En el Simple Pass, ustedes tienen un, en la lista que se les da o en la lista que pues, generalmente se maneja, tienen la base form, tienen la forma pa, a base, tienen el, um, el pass, ¿verdad? Tienen el pass. And you got the participle. Y tienen ustedes un participio. Entonces, uh, let's see by. Buy, que es comprar, en este caso, esa es su forma base. Y en el pasado tenemos both, ¿verdad? Si me equivoco en alguno, ustedes me lo dejan saber. Si hay alguno mal escrito, me van a disculpar. El both, ¿verdad? Y en el participio también es el mismo, es both. Caso contrario a take, que es tomar, ¿verdad? El pasado es en este momento took. Y el participio va a ser taken. Taken. Exactamente. Y aquí Teacher, tenemos dos. And it too. Is eight and eaten. Exactamente. Tenemos varios, ¿verdad? Que cambian. Entonces tenemos eat, que es comer. Y así podemos seguir con una lista bastante larga, ¿verdad? Eight en su pasado, ¿verdad? Y en este caso, eaten. Eaten en el pasado participio. Bueno, hasta acá estaríamos como que, pues, bien, ¿verdad? Eh, vamos a tomar el de comer, ¿verdad? Si nos vamos a una cuestión de oraciones, I eat what? Uh, I eat an apple, por ejemplo. También una manzana, ¿verdad? Eh, hacemos en el del pasado. I ate an apple. Y ya tenemos otra en pasado, ¿verdad? Y entonces, ¿en qué momento voy a utilizar el participio? El participio viene con los perfectos o con los tiempos perfectos. Entonces, ahí yo ya uso otra cosa aparte de mi verbo, que es el auxiliar. Entonces, I have eaten an apple. ¿Verdad? Yo me he comido una manzana. ¿Verdad? Y este have es ese yo he. ¿Verdad? que es de los participios. En español, do we use them? Así que no, fíjense, porque es bien extraño que nosotros digamos eso, a menos que sea una situación bastante eh, diferente. Me he encontrado yo a mí misma no diciendo esas cosas o inventándome otro tiempo verbal a mi buen español, ¿verdad? Para darme a entender, porque por lo general eh, eso hacemos nosotros, deformamos bastante el idioma y... Está bien, ¿verdad? Es lo que nosotros hablamos y pues es lo que se acepta. Entonces, casi los participios no me he encontrado utilizándolos muchos, aunque sí hay en español, ¿verdad? Entonces, en inglés es, son los tiempos participio, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que tenemos nosotros acá? Para los verbos en pasado participio, son aquellos verbos ¿Verdad? En este caso son los verbos que van del pasado, en este caso, al participio, que casi son los mismos. Entonces, el participle, vamos a decir, es la tercera columna de los verbos irregulares y el participle de un verbo regular es el mismo pasado que tiene, ¿verdad? Así, para no darnos tanta vuelta. Entonces, el participle, cuando usted le digan verbo en participle, ah, chévere, la tercera columna de los verbos irregulares. Bueno, estamos bien. Yo me olvido de estas dos porque ya estas dos ya no tienen nada que ver conmigo en el participle. 
Y si le dicen el participle de un verbo regular, el participle de un verbo regular es su mismo pasado. Entonces, ¿cómo cuáles? O como cuál, uh, por ejemplo, talk, ¿verdad? Talk es regular. Entonces, um, ¿al su pasado lo va a utilizar usted? Talk, ¿verdad? Y al participio, lo mismo, ¿verdad? Talk. So, en este caso, aquí ya tenemos los unos irregulares y los otros regulares. Entonces, eh, se quiere usted recordar eso, pues, pasado participio, así, ¿verdad? Para hacerlo sencillo, la tercera columna de los verbos irregulares. Punto. Pasado participio de un verbo regular, el mismo pasado, ¿verdad? Y así lo utilizamos. ¿A dónde voy a utilizar los participios? En los tiempos perfectos. ¿Verdad? En el tiempo perfecto. ¿Cuál es el tiempo perfecto donde yo incluyo el he hecho, el han hecho, ha hecho? ¿Verdad? Entonces voy a incluir el have, ¿verdad? Acuérdese de esto. El participio va a llevar ese a del have, ¿verdad? Entonces esos son los que usted va a utilizar. De ahí en el pasado simple, segunda columna. En el presente simple, primera columna, verbo en su forma base, dependiendo ¿verdad? del cambio que usted tenga, de, de, um, de personal pronoun. Entonces, eh, así serían, pues en este caso, los participios. How you will learn the participles? ¿Cómo se va a aprender usted los participios? Ay, quisiera que hubiera algo, ¿verdad? Una fórmula, pero no la hay. Estos Sorry. son de memoria. Yes, just sorry. Yes, just studying, ¿verdad? By heart. Entonces, eh, ¿cómo, voy a ¿cómo voy a diferenciar entre un irregular en un regular? Tampoco tenemos fórmula mágica, lo siento. Hay que aprendernos los irregulares, ¿verdad? Para saber diferenciarlos. Entonces, eh, para saber cuál es cuál. Y mire, teacher, ¿y cómo voy a saber a cuál le voy a agregar? He de las reglas, ¿verdad? Del spelling. Reglas del spelling para cada uno de ellos. Entonces, eh, todo le va a servir para todo, ¿verdad? Como ustedes pueden ver, todo va, es un hilito que se va tejiendo, ¿verdad? Desde el primer módulo hasta lo último que usted aprende. It's just something that you need to follow, right? It's a rope that you are keep on, you know, right? So, yeah, that's basically what happened. Entonces, este es un hilito que va a ustedes just pushing. Pushing, right? pushing, pushing and trying to get it until the end. Lo van a tener que ir jalando hasta llegar hasta el final, ¿verdad? Entonces, sí, so that's important. That's important. So questions that you might have. Preguntas que ustedes tengan. Preguntas. No. Vaya, aquí solamente es un poquito, ¿verdad? De lo mucho. Si eh, ustedes se sienten um, secure, si se sienten un poquito inseguros, eh, go back, pueden irse un poquito hacia atrás, estudiar lo que tienen y si tienen dudas, uh, tráiganlas a la clase, ¿verdad? Pueden traerlas a la clase y con mucho gusto abrimos un espacio y las despejamos, ¿sí? Ok, teacher. Thank okay, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ok. All right, yep. So, yes, sure. you're welcome. So, veamos entonces, uh, the past participle y los adjetivos, right? Adjectives, what they do? They describe, right? So, basically here, we are going to have verbs that will describe something, the state of something, right? Entonces, acá lo que nosotros vamos a tener son verbos tomando el lugar de adjetivos que nos van a describir algo, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo está algo, verdad, en este caso? So, I have this for you, right? So, adjectives formed from the past participle conveys information about how something happened, when something took place, or how someone feels, right? Entonces, los adjetivos formados de los pasados participios nos traen información acerca de ¿Cómo algo pasó? ¿Cuándo 
algo sucedió, ¿verdad? O tomó lugar. Y cómo se siente alguien al respecto de eso. Volvemos al ejemplo que teníamos de Reina. I was surprised, ¿verdad? Y entonces, ¿cómo se sintió ella? Ella se sorprendió al ver que el médico, ¿verdad? Con sus cosas y uno dice, y bueno, ¿y qué le pasa, muchacho, verdad? Entonces, ese pasado nos hace saber cómo ella se sintió, ¿verdad? I was surprised, ¿verdad? Y entonces, para eso usted utiliza los adjetivos formados del pasado participio, ¿verdad? I was surprised. Estaba bien sorprendida. So, entonces, eso es como ellos se utilizan o para qué usted los va a utilizar. Are we good up to here? Estamos bien hasta acá. Yes, teacher. Okay, good. Then. If someone is taking notes, let me know. So I won't pass the slide and you will just, there, right, losing in the, in the blue. ¿Puedo pasar el slide? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay, so the grammar structure, right? So the grammar structure to go ahead and form them is basically this one. You are going to see it with simple present. La van a ver con presente simple. For example, subject B past participle as adjective, right? My shirt is torn, right? You see, this is the torn, right? Here is torn. And you have a set connection, right? Which is the subject plus have and as a noun, right? My share has a turn. What do they mean, each of them? They mean the same, right? Just they are simple said in a different way, right? How they make you feel about this? The same, right? Your share has a turn. How you feel, you're not gonna be happy, right? Because your share has a turn. Obviously, you're going to be kind of sad, mad, maybe, because something happened to your shirt and it was your favorite and it has a turn, right? Or it has a tear. So this is will be basically the grammar structure that you are going to have. And the meaning for each of the sentences is basically the same. They doesn't change, right? So in a structura grammatical, ¿qué es lo que ustedes van a tener? Va a tener el sujeto, va a tener el be, va a tener el past participle que va a actuar como el adjetivo. Entonces, my shirt is turned. Mi camisa, ¿verdad? Está rota. Hay otro que es igual en significado, pero se dice de diferente manera. Que sería el sujeto, el have y el noun. Have, remember that you are going to use it on demand. So if you have plural, it's have. If you have singular, it's has. Right? So my share has a tear. Mi camisa tiene. Nosotros diríamos a nuestro buen salvadoreño un hoyo. ¿Verdad? Mi camisa tiene un hoyo. Mi camisa tiene una ruptura. Mi camisa está rota. ¿Verdad? Entonces, eh, ¿qué significan las dos? Está roto, ajá, está roto. ¿Vale? Nosotros no decimos uh -huh. tanto, ¿Vale? no le estructuramos tanto, solo decimos está rota, ¿verdad? Está rota. Entonces es casi lo mismo. Ellos sí lo hacen así, ¿y por qué, teacher? Things that they do, right? Cosas que ellos hacen. Eso esencialmente significan lo mismo, sí, esencialmente. Y dicho de diferente manera, ¿verdad? Pero al final, pues, el resultado es el same. La camisa está rota. Entonces, así se utiliza, ¿verdad? Literalmente nos dice cómo está algo, cómo se ha tomado eso en su lugar o en qué momento pasó, ¿verdad? En qué pasó y cómo nos hizo sentir, probablemente. So, questions that you might have. I have a question, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, you say has in, in singular or plural? Regáleme un momentito, ya le contesto.
Perdón, me estoy tomando un poquito de agua. No problem, teacher. Sorry. I don't know. I'm so sorry. So, have or has? Has. Eh, has. Yes. Has. In singular or plural? Singular. Okay. Singular. Sí. Vamos a ver acá un poquito. Para los que tal vez. No eh, important the person. Eh, or only team. Remember that um, you might have as a subject the personal pronoun or a noun, right? So subjects can be por ahorita, ¿verdad? Y eso lo voy a decir por ahorita porque más adelante van a ver algo. Subjects can be nouns or personal pronouns, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, los subjects son los que les van a determinar qué es lo que usted va a utilizar. En este caso, del have y el has son verbos y son auxiliares. Ellos, él es dos cosas. Él hace dos funciones, verbos y auxiliares. Aquí es un auxiliar en esta oración, por ejemplo. I have. ¿Por qué es el auxiliar? Porque item es lo que a mí me interesa. Porque, ¿qué es lo que yo me comí? Es una manzana. Entonces, el protagonista es it, que es comer, eaten. Entonces, aquí have está utilizado como un auxiliar. Caso contrario, en este caso, que has está siendo utilizado como un verbo. ¿Verdad? Porque esto sería ya literalmente tener, tener algo. Entonces aquí el have usted lo va a utilizar con I, you, we y they. They. Exactamente. Y has se va a utilizar con he, she and it. Recordemos que los pronombres personales they substitute the nouns. Ellos sustituyen a los nombres. Entonces, en el caso de la shirt, literalmente la shirt no es un objeto animado, es un objeto inanimado, ¿verdad? Entonces, por lo tanto, es una cosa. Es eso o esa. Y el personal pronoun para eso o esa es it. Entonces, si yo quisiera, ¿verdad? Si yo quisiera, y aquí como ya todos sabemos que estamos hablando de la camisa, yo puedo poner, it has a tear, ¿verdad? Y tiene un hoyo. ¿Y el que tiene un hoyo? La camisa, porque nosotros ya sabemos que estamos hablando de la camisa. Entonces, eh, usted va a cambiar, ustedes van a cambiar sus pronombres personales on demand, en demanda, ¿verdad? Which is your demand. Your demand is to know if the person knows what you are talking about. Su demanda es saber si la persona sabe de lo que usted está hablando. Como nosotros acá ya sabemos que estamos hablando de la camisa, yo puedo decir, it has a tear. Tiene una camisa, tiene un hoyo, ¿verdad? ¿El qué? La camisa, ya todos lo sabemos. Entonces, eh, ahí depende de lo que usted quiera expresar, ¿verdad? Ok, teacher. You are welcome. Ok. So, fíjense que no les pasé la, la attendance. Y me van a disculpar, y ya es hora. Eh, Aisa Ortiz, yo sé que está aquí, la vi por ahí. Sí, ¿verdad? Aisa. Aisa. O no se pronuncia así. Yo la vi, fíjense que yo vi a Aisa. Yo vi a Aisa. Bueno, yo se la voy a poner para acá porque yo la vi. Que en este eh, nombre es Aleli, Mariona. Yes. I am here. You are here. Okay. Is Aleli. Aleli. Sí. Aleli. Okay. Perfecto. Entonces. Okay. Thank um, you. Ana Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Present teacher. Thank you, Byron. I saw you here. Blanca Galdames. Present teacher. Present. Thank you. 
Carlos Portillo. Carlitos. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Domínguez. Present teacher. Gracias. Cristina Quintanilla. Chris. Where are you at, Chris? You're here? No. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. So, si no pueden decirme o tienen problemas con audio, pónganle en el chat, ¿verdad? Present. Uh, Damaris Marroquín. Present teacher. Gracias. Daisy Hernández. Dave, ¿no? Ok. Elizabeth del Carmen. Present teacher. Gracias, muy amable. Elmer Salas. Present teacher. Gracias. Juan Morán. Present teacher. Gracias, muy amable. Luis Miguel. Here. Oh, thank you, Luis Miguel. Ok, Madeleine, mm. I know that you are here. María Griselda. I'm, I'm here, teacher. You are here. Ok, there you go. Uh, Miguel Arsenio. Present, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Reinita, I know that you are here. Uh, Rufino Amilca. Hernández. Here. Gracias. Eh, Sandra Janet Vázquez, Sandrita. I'm here, here, teacher. Gracias. Saúl, I saw you, right? Here, teacher. Yeah. Thank you. Wendy, as well, I hear you. Present. Yes, I know. Yes, thank you. So some of you probably, uh, if I hear you, I'm just going to put the attendance and some others now. Uh, si estaban aquí, Daisy y Cristina, por favor, déjenmelo saber, eh, ya sea en el chat de WhatsApp, para no dejarla sin attendance, ¿verdad? Así que cualquier cosa, solamente antes de irnos, ya sé que ya tenemos el tiempo contado. Eh, cualquier cosa que suceda, si ustedes, eh, como les digo, vienen tarde, pasa algo, eh, por favor, solo déjenmelo saber en el chat, estoy aquí. Y si ya he pasado asistencia, estoy aquí y para ponerle su asistencia, ¿verdad? Para no dejarlo sin asistencia. La asistencia es muy importante. Así que, pues, eso sería todo. Cualquier cosa con los ejercicios me avisa. Yo sabía que hoy iba a ser un poquito irregular, pero eh, ustedes me dejan saber y estoy para ayudarles. Así que nos vemos mañana. If they okay, okay, teacher. Teacher. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye